ऑडियो बुक क्लास एट साइंस चैप्टर एटीन पोल्यूशन ऑफ एयर एंड वाटर पेज टू थर्टी नाइन पहेली एंड बोझो व वेरी एक्साइटेड टू नो दैट ताजमहल इन आगरा इज वन ऑफ द सेवन वंडर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बट दे वर डिसअपॉइंटेड टू हियर दैट द ब्यूटी ऑफ दिस मोन्यूमेंट इन व्हाइट मार्बल इज बींग थ्रेटेंड बाय एयर पोल्यूशन इन द एरिया सराउंडिंग द ताज दे वर ईगर टू नो इफ समथिंग कैन बी डन टू कंट्रोल द एयर एंड वॉटर पोल्यूशन वी आर ऑल अवेयर दैट आवर एनवायरमेंट इज नॉट वॉट इट यूज टू बी आवर एल्डर्स टॉक अबाउट द क्लीन वॉटर एंड फ्रेश एयर दैट वॉज अवेलेबल इन दैर टाइम्स now the media regularly reports on the falling quality of the environment we ourselves feel the impact of the falling quality of air and water in our lives the number of people suffering from diseases of the respiratory system for example is steadily rising we shudder to imagine a time when clean air and water may no longer be available You have learnt about the importance of air and water in your previous classes. In this chapter, we will study about the harmful changes taking place in our surroundings and their effects on our lives. Eighteen point one, air pollution. We can survive for some time without food, but we cannot survive even for a few minutes without air. this simple fact tells us how important clean air is to us you already know that air consists of a mixture of gases by volume about 78% of this mixture is nitrogen and about 21% is oxygen carbon dioxide argon methane ozone and water vapor are also present in very small quantities activity 18.1 You may have covered your nose while passing a brick kiln emitting smoke or started coughing while walking on a busy road as shown in figure 18.1 on the basis of your experience compare the quality of air at the places we are going to discuss now a park and a busy road a residential area and an industrial area a busy traffic intersection at different times of the day example early morning afternoon and evening a village and a town figure 18.1 depicts a congested road in a city page 240 one of your observations in the activity we just discussed could be the differences in the amount of smoke in the atmosphere do you know where the smoke could have come from addition of such substances to the atmosphere modifies it when air is contaminated by unwanted substances which have a harmful effect on both the living and the non-living it is referred to as air pollution 18.2 how does air get polluted the substances which contaminate the air are called air pollutants sometimes such substances may come from natural sources like smoke and dust arising from forest fires or volcanic eruptions Pollutants are also added to the atmosphere by certain human activities. The sources of air pollutants are factories as shown in figure 18.2, power plants, automobile exhausts and burning of firewood and dung cakes. Figure 18.2, smoke from a factory. Activity 18.2 You might have read in the newspapers that respiratory problems amongst children are rising day by day. Conduct a survey of households in your neighborhood and among friends to find out how many children are suffering from respiratory problems. Many respiratory problems are caused by air pollution. Let us now try to find out the substances or pollutants which are present in the polluted air. Have you noticed how rapidly the number of vehicles is increasing in our cities? Vehicles produce high levels of pollutants like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxides and smoke as shown in figure 18.3. Carbon monoxide is produced from incomplete burning of fuels such as petrol and diesel. It is a poisonous gas. It reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. figure 
air pollution due to automobiles. Do you know, if the vehicles registered in Delhi are lined up one after the other, the total length would be nearly equal to the combined lengths of the two longest rivers in the world, Nile and Amazon. Page 241 Bujo remembers seeing a thick fog-like layer in the atmosphere, especially during winters. This is smog, which is made up of smoke and fog. Smoke may contain oxides of nitrogen which combine with other air pollutants and fog to form smog. The smog causes breathing difficulties such as asthma, cough and wheezing in children. Many industries are also responsible for causing air pollution. Petroleum refineries are a major source of gaseous pollutants like sulphur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. Sulphur dioxide is produced by combustion of fuels like coal in power plants. It can cause respiratory problems, including permanent lung damage. You have already studied about the burning of fossil fuels in Chapter 5. Other kinds of pollutants are chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which are used in refrigerators, air conditioners and aerosol sprays. CFCs damage the ozone layer of the atmosphere. Recall that the ozone layer protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. Have you heard about the ozone hole? Try to find out about it. Thankfully, less harmful chemicals are now being used in place of CFCs. In addition to the above-mentioned gases, automobiles which burn diesel and petrol also produce tiny particles which remain suspended in air for long periods as shown in figure 18.3. They reduce visibility. When inhaled, they cause diseases. Such particles are also produced during industrial processes like steel making and mining. Power plants give out tiny ash particles, which also pollute the atmosphere. Activity 18.3 Prepare a table using the pollutants which we just discussed. You may even add more data to the following table. Table 18.1 It has three columns Air pollutants Sources Effects Make the table in your notebook by adding more data and giving correct answers. 18.3 Case Study The Taj Mahal Over the past two decades, India's most famous tourist attraction, Taj Mahal, located in Agra, figure 18.4, has become a matter of concern. Refer figure 18.4 has become a matter of concern. Experts have warned that pollutants in air are discoloring its white marble. So, it is not only living organisms that get affected by polluted air, but non-living things like buildings, monuments and statues also get affected. The industries located in and around Agra like rubber processing, automobile, Chemicals and especially the Mathura oil refinery have been responsible for producing pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. These gases react with the water vapor present in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid and nitric acid. These acids drop down with rain, making the rain acidic. This is called acid rain. Acid rain corrodes the marble of the monument. The phenomenon is also called marble cancer. Suspended particulate matter, such as the soot particles emitted by Mathura oil refinery, has contributed towards the yellowing of the marble. The Supreme Court has taken several steps to save the Taj. Page 242, Figure 18.4, Taj Mahal Supreme Court has ordered industries to switch to cleaner fuels like CNG compressed natural gas and LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. Moreover, the automobiles should switch over to unleaded petrol in the Taj zone. Discuss with your elders and see what they have to say about the condition of the Taj 20 or 30 years ago. Try to procure a picture of the Taj Mahal for your scrapbook. Bujo says, I am reminded of the chapter on crops. I wonder whether acid rain affects the soil and plants also. 18.4 Greenhouse Effect 
You know that the sun's rays warm the earth's surface. A part of the radiation that falls on the earth is absorbed by it and a part is reflected back into space. A part of the reflected radiation is trapped by the atmosphere. The trapped radiations further warm the earth. If you have seen a greenhouse in a nursery or elsewhere, recall that the sun's heat is allowed to get in but is not allowed to go out. The trapped heat warms the greenhouse. The trapping of radiations by the earth's atmosphere is similar. That is why it is called the greenhouse effect. Without this process, life would not have been possible on the earth. But now it threatens life. Excess of CO2 in the air is one of the gases responsible for this effect. You know that carbon dioxide is one of the components of air. You have also studied the role of carbon dioxide in plants. But if there is excess of carbon dioxide in the air, it acts as a pollutant. Paheli has a question. But how does CO2 content rise in the atmosphere and become excessive? Page 243 Can you help Paheli find out the answer to her question? On the other hand, Carbon dioxide is continuously being released because of human activities. On the other hand, area under forests is decreasing. Plants utilize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis, thereby decreasing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. Deforestation leads to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the air because the number of trees which consume carbon dioxide is reduced thus contribute to the accumulation of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide traps heat and does not allow it to escape into space. As a result, the average temperature of the Earth's atmosphere is gradually increasing. This is called global warming. Global warming, a serious threat. Global warming can cause sea levels to rise dramatically. In many places, coastal areas have already been flooded. Global warming could result in wide-ranging effects on rainfall patterns, agriculture, forests, plants and animals. Majority of people living in regions which are threatened by global warming are in Asia. A recent climate change report gives us only a limited time to keep the greenhouse gases at the present level. Otherwise, the temperature may rise by more than 2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, a level considered dangerous. Other gases like methane, nitrous oxide and water vapour also contribute towards this effect. Like carbon dioxide, they are also called greenhouse gases. Global warming has become a major concern for governments worldwide. Many countries have reached an agreement to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol is one such agreement. Paheli tells him that she had read in the newspapers recently that the Gangotri Glacier in the Himalayas has started melting because of global warming. 18.5. What can be done? What can we do to reduce air pollution? There are many success stories in our fight against air pollution. For example, a few years ago, Delhi was one of the most polluted cities in the world. It was being choked by fumes released from automobiles running on diesel and petrol. A decision was taken to switch to fuels like CNG, see figure 18.5, and unleaded petrol. Figure 18.5, a public transport bus powered by CNG. Page 244. These measures have resulted in cleaner air for the city. You might know of some other examples from your area regarding reduction of air pollution. Share these with your friends. Do you know about the Say No to Crackers campaign which was organized by children from many schools? This made a big difference to the air pollution levels around Diwali. The quality of air at various locations is monitored regularly by government and other agencies. We can use this data to generate awareness about air pollution among friends and neighbours. There is a need to switch over to alternative fuels instead of the fossil fuels for our energy requirements. 
These could be solar energy, hydropower and wind energy. Activity 18.4 You have various options of commuting to your school such as walking, going by bicycle, travelling by bus or other public transport, using a car individually, travelling by carpool. Discuss in your class the impact of each of these options on the quality of air. Small contributions on our part can make a huge difference in the state of the environment. We can plant trees and nurture the ones already present in the neighborhood. Do you know about Van Mahotsav? When lakhs of trees are planted in July every year, as shown in figure 18.6. Figure 18.6 Children Planting Saplings Page 245 Bujo and Paheli once happened to go to an area where some people were burning dry leaves. They started coughing because the entire area was full of smoke. Paheli thought it would be a better option to put them in a compost pit rather than burning. What do you think? 18.6 Water Pollution in class 7, you learnt that water is a precious resource. Think and list the various activities in which we need water. We saw that water is becoming scarce due to increase in population, industries and agricultural activities. You have also studied how water becomes dirty after we use it for washing clothes, bathing etc. This means that we are adding some materials to the water which spoil its quality and change its smell and color. Whenever harmful substances such as sewage, toxic chemicals, silt etc. get mixed with water, the water becomes polluted. The substances that pollute water are called water pollutants. Activity 18.5 Try to collect samples of water from a tap, pond, river, well and lake. Pour each into separate glass containers. Compare these for smell, acidity and color. Complete the following table. Table 18.2 This table has four columns. The first one is for the kind of water, second for smell, third for acidity and the fourth one is for color. The first column has five sub-columns. The first one being tap water, Second, pond water, then river water, well water and finally lake water. Now, finish this table in your notebook by comparing for smell, acidity and color. 18.7 How does water get polluted? Case study Ganga is one of the most famous rivers of India, as shown in figure 18.7. It sustains most of the northern, central and eastern Indian population. Millions of people depend on it for their daily needs and livelihood. Figure 18.7 Course of the River Ganga We can see that it originates at Gom, then it goes to Gangotri, from there it reaches Kanpur, then Allahabad, and after that via Banaras, it reaches Patna. After Patna, it reaches Kolkata and finally it joins the Bay of Bengal. Page 246 However, recently a study by the Worldwide Fund for Nature, WWF found that Ganga is one of the 10 most endangered rivers in the world. The pollution levels have been rising for many years. We have reached this stage because the towns and cities through which the river flows, throw large quantities of garbage, untreated sewage, dead bodies and many other harmful things directly into the river. In fact, the river is dead at many places where the pollution levels are so high that aquatic life cannot survive. An ambitious plan to save the river called the Ganga Action Plan was launched in 1985. It aimed to reduce the pollution levels in the river. However, the increasing population and industrialization have already damaged this mighty river beyond repair. Now, the Government of India has launched a new initiative known as National Mission for Clean Ganga, NMCG, in 2016. Let us take a specific example 
to understand the situation. The Ganga at Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh, UP, has one of the most polluted stretches of the river. Refer figure 18.8. Kanpur is one of the most populated towns in UP. People can be seen bathing, washing clothes and defecating in the river. They also throw garbage, flowers, idols of gods and goddesses and non-biodegradable polythene bags into the river. At Kanpur, the amount of water is comparatively small and the flow of the river is very slow. In addition, Kanpur has more than 5,000 industries. These include fertilizer, detergent, leather and paint industries. These industrial units discharge toxic chemical wastes into the river. Based on the above information, think of the answers to the following questions. What are the factors responsible for pollution of the river? What steps can be taken to restore the river Ganga to its past glory? How would the disposable of garbage etc. affect the living organisms in the river? Many industries discharge harmful chemicals into rivers and streams, causing the pollution of water, as shown in figure 18.9. Examples are oil refineries, paper factories, textile and sugar mills and chemical factories. Figure 18.8 .8, A polluted stretch of the river Ganga Figure 18.9 Industrial waste discharged into a river Page 247 These industries cause chemical contamination of water. The chemicals released include arsenic, lead and fluorides which lead to toxicity in plants and animals. There are regulations to prevent this. Industries are supposed to treat the waste produced before discharging it into waters. But quite often, the rules are not followed. The soil is also affected by impure water, causing changes in acidity, growth of worms, etc. We have learnt in Chapter 1 the importance of pesticides and weedicides for the protection of crops. However, all these chemicals dissolve in water and are washed into water bodies from the fields. They also seep into the ground to pollute groundwater. Have you seen ponds which look green from a distance because they have a lot of algae growing in them? This is caused by excessive quantities of chemicals which get washed from the fields. These act as nutrients for algae to flourish. Once these algae die, they serve as food for decomposers like bacteria. A lot of oxygen in the water body gets used up. This results in a decrease in the oxygen level which may kill aquatic organisms. Recall Activity 18.6 You had investigated the sewage disposal system of your locality in Class 7. Do you remember how the sewage was collected from your home and where it went thereafter? Sometimes untreated sewage is thrown directly into rivers. It contains food wastes, detergents, microorganisms, etc. Can groundwater get polluted by sewage? How? Water contaminated with sewage may contain bacteria, virus, fungi and parasites which cause diseases like cholera, typhoid and jaundice. The bacteria present in the feces of mammals are indicators of the quality of water. If water has these bacteria, it means that it has been contaminated by fecal matter. If such water is used by us, it can cause various infections. Do you know? Hot water can also be a pollutant. This is usually water from power plants and industries. It is released into the rivers. It raises the temperature of the water body, adversely affecting the animals and plants living in it. 18.8 .8. What is potable water and how is water purified? Activity 18.7 Let us construct a water filter with simple everyday materials. Take a plastic bottle and cut it into two halves at the centre. Use the upper half as a funnel by putting it upside down in the lower half. Make layers in it with a paper napkin or a fine cloth followed by cotton, sand and then gravel. Now, 
pour dirty water through the filter and observe the filtered water. Page 248 Discuss the following questions amongst yourselves and with your teacher. Why do we need to filter water before drinking? Where do you get your drinking water from? What will happen if we drink polluted water? Bujo is very upset. He tells Paheli that he drank water which looked clear and was without any smell but still he fell sick. Paheli explains that water which looks clean may still have disease-carrying microorganisms and dissolved impurities. So it is essential to purify water before drinking, for example by boiling. Water which is suitable for drinking is called portable water. You have seen how various physical and chemical processes in the sewage treatment plants help to clean water before discharging it into water bodies. Similarly, municipal bodies treat the water before supplying it to households. Do you know, 25% of the world's population is without safe drinking water. Let us see how water can be made safe for drinking. You have already seen how water is filtered. This is a physical method of removing impurities. A popular household filter is a candle type filter. Many households use boiling as a method for obtaining safe drinking water. Boiling kills the germs present in the water. Chlorination is a commonly used chemical method for purifying water. It is done by adding chlorine tablets or bleaching powder to the water. We must be cautious. We should not use more chlorine tablets than specified. 18.9 What can be done? Activity 18.8 .8. Investigate the level of awareness about water pollution in your area. Collect data on the sources of drinking water and the methods of sewage disposal. What are the common waterborne diseases in the community? You can consult your local doctor or health worker for this. Which are the governmental and non-governmental organizations working in this field? What are the measures being taken by them for generating awareness? Laws for industrial units should be strictly implemented so that polluted water is not disposed of directly into rivers and lakes. Water treatment plants should be installed in all industrial areas as shown in figure 18.10. At our individual levels, we should consciously save water and not waste it. Reduce, reuse and recycle should be our mantra. Think of your daily routine. How can you save water? We can think of creative ideas like reusing water used for washing and for other household tasks. For example, Water used for washing vegetables may be used to water plants in the garden. Page 249 Figure 18.10 Water Treatment Plant Pollution is no longer a distant phenomenon. It is affecting the quality of our daily lives. Unless we all realize our responsibility and start using environment-friendly processes, the very survival of our planet is in danger. Do you know? While brushing your teeth, leaving the tap running may waste several liters of water. A tap that drips once every second wastes a few thousand liters of water every year. Think about it. Page 250 Keywords Air Pollution Chemical Contamination Global warming, greenhouse effect, pollutants, portable water, water pollution. What you have learnt. Air pollution is the contamination of air by impurities which may have a harmful impact on the living organisms and the non-living components. Pollutants are the substances which contaminate air and water. Carbon monoxide nitrogen oxides, carbon dioxide, methane and sulphur dioxide are the major pollutants of air. Increasing levels of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide are leading to global warming. 
Water pollution is the contamination of water by substances harmful to life. Sewage, agricultural chemicals and industrial waste are some of the major contaminants of water. Water which is purified and fit for drinking is known as potable water. Water is a precious natural resource. We must learn to conserve it. Exercises 1. What are the different ways in which water gets contaminated? 2. At an individual level, how can you help reduce air pollution? 3. Clear, transparent water is always fit for drinking. Comment 4. You are a member of the municipal body of your town. Make a list of measures that would help your town to ensure the supply of clean water to all its residents. 5. Explain the differences between pure air and polluted air. 6. Explain circumstances leading to acid rain. How does acid rain affect us? 7. Which of the following is not a greenhouse gas? A. Carbon dioxide B. Sulfur dioxide Page 251 C. Methane D. Nitrogen 8. Describe the greenhouse effect in your own words 9. Prepare a brief speech on global warming. You have to deliver the speech in your class 10. Describe the threat to the beauty of the Taj Mahal 11. Why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of aquatic organisms? Extended Learning, Activities and Projects 1. In some cities, a pollution check has been made compulsory for vehicles. Visit a petrol pump in order to learn about the process of conducting a pollution check. You may systematically record your findings in the following areas. Average number of vehicles checked per month. Time taken to check each vehicle. Pollutants checked for. The process of testing. Permissible levels of emission of various gases. Measures taken if the emitted gases are above the permissible limits. How frequently is the pollution check required? 2. Conduct a survey in your school to investigate various environment-related activities that have been undertaken. The class can divide itself in two groups, with each group looking at a different area. For example, one group can find out whether there is an environment club in the school. What are its objectives? What is its calendar of events? How can you become a member? If your school does not have such a club, you even think of starting one along with a few of your friends. 3. Organize a field visit to a river in or around your town with the help of your teachers. Page 252 Observations followed by discussion could focus on The history of the river Cultural traditions Role of the river in meeting the town's water needs Pollution concerns, sources of pollution, effects of pollution on the people living by the riverside as well as those living far away. 4. Find out with the help of your teachers and the internet, if possible, whether there are any international agreements to control global warming. Which are the gases covered under these agreements? Chapter 18 of total 18 chapters ends here. Narrator Neeraj Yadav You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control, Bati Langlingdo. Technical Assistance, Vikas Sangwan. Assistance in Production, Jagbandhu Jana. Direction and Production, Vandana Arimardan. This audio book is brought to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.